In the headlines over the weekend, Rocky Mount police rack up suspects on drug charges. Police say they are still looking for a man wanted for domestic violence. A man wanted in shoplifting from an area business is caught. We're bringing you the latest in our crime report. And teachers could face even tougher issues this year as the state continues to skim the budget. These stories and more coming up on Newsbreak starting now. From WHIG TV, this is News Break 31. Now, here's Marie Torres. Hello, and thanks for tuning in to WHIG TV News Break, your voice in the community. I'm Marie Torres. The area has been plagued with several recent crimes. First up in our crime report, a man wanted in shoplifting from an area business is caught. According to Rocky Mount Police, the incident occurred at the Dollar General on 4113 Sunset Avenue, January 18th, where it's believed 43-year-old James Earl Ricks Jr. was allegedly stealing merchandise from the store. According to police, a 28-year-old employee observed Ricks removing property from the store and followed him outside. While attempting to detain Ricks, this suspect pushed the employee and fled. Ricks is currently charged with simple assault, misdemeanor larceny, and communicating threats. He was taken to Nash County Jail. Over the weekend, a tip to police leads to an arrest. Rocky Mount Police say that around 3.30 Saturday morning, they received word that this man, 27-year-old Jeffrey Allen Holmes Jr., was spotted walking with a handgun towards the sheet store on 1690 Benvenue Road. Police say Holmes was located and is now facing charges of two counts of attempted robbery with a dangerous weapon. He was issued a $2,500 bond and was sent to Nash County Jail. Police say there are still, they, they're still looking for a man wanted for domestic violence. Sunday, a 23-year-old female victim on Cherry Street alerted police around 4 a.m. of the suspect, 24-year-old Eric Devon Harrison. Somehow, two hours later, Harrison allegedly showed back up at the victim's home, broke in, threatened her, assaulted her, and then took her cell phone. When Harrison left, the victim's roommate was able to call police. Warrants have been obtained on Harrison for assault on a female, common law robbery, misdemeanor breaking and entering, and communicating threats. At the time of this report, Harrison had yet to be located. Over the weekend, Rocky Mount Police also racked up on suspects with drug charges around 8 a.m. Sunday morning inside room 147 at the Sunshine Inn, police arrested Wilson men 35-year-old Stacy Liddell Williams as well as Douglas Eugene Williams, who is not pictured here. Stacy Williams was charged with possession with the intent to sell and deliver marijuana, maintaining a vehicle for the sale of marijuana, possession of less than one half ounce of marijuana, and possession of drug paraphernalia. Douglas Williams was charged with possession of drug paraphernalia and was released. Stacy Williams, Williams has since been released on a $5,500 secured bond. In addition, Sunday afternoon, 24-year-old Kenneth Lionel Jordan Jr. was arrested in a separate incident on Highway 301 bypass and Harbor West Drive. According to Rocky Mount Police, Jordan was arrested during a traffic stop. Through further investigation, officers say they located 14 ounces of marijuana inside the vehicle. Jordan is now charged with possession with the intent to sell and deliver marijuana, felony possession of marijuana, possession of less than one half ounce of marijuana, and possession of drug paraphernalia. He was jailed in Nash County under an $8,500 secured bond. And police arrested a man who allegedly stole a bike from an area home. Sunday evening, police say 33-year-old Stacy Christopher Reeves broke into a home at 424 Earl Street. There, police say Reeves took the bike but was spotted leaving the scene by the victim. Though Reeves has yet to be located at the time of this report, when he is found, he faces charges of felony breaking and entering and larceny after breaking and entering. 
After the break, thousands of teachers could lose their jobs this year. We tell you how and February is Black History Month. We'll hear from an area leader on the, the importance of this time. But first, here are some facts that celebrate the achievements of black heroines and heroes in America. Here are your black history facts. Nathaniel Alexander was the first to patent the folding chair. His invention was designed to be used in schools, churches, and at large social gatherings. When Kareem Abdul-Jabbar retired from the NBA in 1989, he had scored the most points, blocked the most shots, won the most MVP awards, and played in more All-Star games than any other player in the sport. You waited patiently. Now it's time. Clearance time at Davenport Honda in Rocky Mount. Hundreds of brand new Hondas all tagged with the year's lowest prices with savings up to $6,000 and a lifetime warranty on every vehicle. But hurry because at Davenport Honda these deals are the one thing that won't last forever. Davenport Honda in Rocky Mount. Your dealership for life. The Country Inn and Suites is your home away from home with a staff that always treats you as family. If you or your church or company has visitors, give them a great Rocky Mount welcome with a special discount on their overnight or extended stay. Not only is the Country Inn and Suites a comfortable place, we'll spoil them with fresh cookies and complimentary breakfast. We are filled with luxuries like an indoor pool, fitness center, and a guest laundry. The business center includes a boardroom, connection to high-speed internet, and catering for meetings is always available. Call me, Donna Vachavis, at 252-442-0500 for a tour and or to set up your corporate rate. You're always welcome as family in the country, country and in suites, Rocky Mountain. Welcome back to WHIG TV Newsbreak. I'm Marie Torres. It's likely that thousands of teachers across the state may lose their jobs this year. The main reason is due to budget cuts. However, this week, the North Carolina Association of Educators says that there is a solution to prevent this impact on education. The association notes that many of those jobs could be saved by closing corporate tax loopholes. They add that stores like Target or Walmart in our communities pay 0% corporate taxes, but that homegrown North Carolina businesses that are owned by North Carolinians do pay a corporate tax. The association says it has compiled a lengthy list of tax loopholes that could be closed, taxes that could be made more equitable, and taxes that could be implemented to save billions and produce greater revenue instead of putting the axe to teachers' jobs. The association also says services and some non-essential items could be taxed, like soft drinks or beer. The group is pushing lawmakers to consider tax code changes before teacher cuts. In other news, February is Black History Month. This is an annual celebration of achievements by black Americans and a time for recognizing the central role of African Americans in U.S. history. This event grew out of Negro History Week, the brainchild of noted historian Carter G. Woodson and other prominent African Americans. Beginning in 1976, every U.S. president has officially designated the month of February as Black History Month. Other countries around the world, including Canada, and the United Kingdom also devote a month to celebrating black history. During this time, WHIG-TV will be highlighting black leaders, facts on black history, as well as issues or interesting stories impacting the black community of our area. Here's the host of WHIG-TV's show, Shine a Little Light, Evangeline Bullock, on why this month is important to her and why after decades it still should be celebrated. Well, it's important to me because I grew up in the era where we were not recognized and have all of the rights that we now have. So it's important for us to remember where we've come from. 
And I think that it's important to instill that in our children so that they can appreciate now where we are and the hard work that it took to get here. And why should people just in general make sure that they celebrate Black History Month? Well, we must not forget where we came from. And it is as a period and a, a time in our lives that is worth celebrating um, just to know that that was then, this is now. It's kind of like a, a major part of our growing up. It's something that we celebrate, like a birthday or a Christmas or anything else that we appreciate where we are now. Again, we'll be hearing from more area leaders throughout the month of February. And we can't celebrate Black History Month without acknowledging one of America's historic towns that's made a big impact in the survival of the black legacy in our own community. During the summer, we took a trip down to the Princeville Museum in the town of Princeville during the 11th anniversary of the flood that tore through the town that was established by slaves. Residents spoke to the spirit of strength that still lives there and took us on a tour of their history. Tell us about this day and maybe um, what does this day uh, remember? It's a good day. It's a good day because we've overcome a lot of things. Uh, particular last disaster we had to deal with with Hurricane Floyd and the town basically was destroyed. Um, I really didn't think it was going to take this long for us to regroup, recruit, recreate, but it has and it's been a journey. Some have done well, some have not done well, but the Lord has kept us all together and we want to remember the history, not only from the flood but from the past where the original uh, uh, ancestor established this area and brought it from a swamp area to what you see today. And this, he was a carpenter and a slave at that time, and he did a lot of buildings that were located here in Princeville in the beginning. This is Freedom Hill that sound will be replaced in the area where they're putting the bridge now. They're going to uh, clean that. Uh, area park off and put the sign back in place. Okay. In the back, you will see the different bridges. At the top, that's the fourth bridge. This is a uh, bridge here that replaced that in the early ages, stages, as you can see. At one time, the bridge used to have a top on it, you know. And this was the only transportation they had in getting commodities and things like this into the area. They used uh, saw like the steamboats, you know, that would transport goods and uh, commodities uh, in and out of the town of Tarver and Frontsville. This is one of the first bridges, as you see here. You see with the cargo and everything and the living areas probably at the top. And this is what you call a swing bridge. They would swing it around so the boats and things could go down the river. Here you will see a list of people that have served as mayor in the town. We've had only two people that have served two terms and that's your previous mayor that you have now. Priscilla uh, uh, Everett Oaks and Delia Jean Perkins. And these are all the people that have served. The young man that you see over here, uh, George Henry White, they named a stamp after him. His picture is also located in Tarver in the post office. He was real active in uh, Congress during the time of Reconstruction, and he did a lot, a lot of fruitful work in getting the rights and everything for people in the community. Again, that was our tour of the Princeville Museum that aired during our special report in the summer called When the Floodwaters Came. When we return on WHIG TV News Break, it's your look at sports and weather, as well as more black history facts. Stay with us. As a child, Muhammad Ali was refused an autograph by his idol, boxer Sugar Ray Robinson. When Ali became a prize fighter, he vowed never to deny an autograph request, which he is honored to this day. 
Hattie McDaniel was the first black performer to win an Academy Award, earning Best Supporting Actress for her role as Mammy in the epic film Gone with the Wind. Patiently. Now it's time. Clearance time at Davenport Honda in Rocky Mount. Hundreds of brand new Hondas, all tagged with a year's lowest prices, with savings up to $6,000 and a lifetime warranty on every vehicle. But hurry, because at Davenport Honda, these deals are the one thing that won't last forever. Davenport Honda in Rocky Mount, your dealership for life. When it's happening to you, you'll hear from us. WHIG TV Newsbreak is reporting on the news, issues, and stories that matter to you. Call us at 252-885-1814, email us at marie.whigtv at gmail.com, or check us streaming live at whigtv.com. We're your voice, ready to bring you the news. The Country Inn and Suites is your home away from home with a staff that always treats you as family. If you or your church or company has visitors, give them a great Rocky Mount welcome with a special discount on their overnight or extended stay. Not only is the Country Inn and Suites a comfortable place, we'll spoil them with fresh cookies and complimentary breakfast. We are filled with luxuries like an indoor pool, fitness center, and a guest laundry. The business center includes a boardroom, connection to high-speed internet, and catering for meetings is always available. Call me, Donna Vachavis, at 252-442-0500 for a tour and or to set up your corporate rate. You're always welcome as family in the country, country and in suites, rocking out. Thanks for staying tuned. Now here's a look at the days ahead in weather with WHIG-TV meteorologist Fred Holdsworth. Fred? A look at our forecast segment of the show and we'll take a look at a big winter storm that is going on out over the uh, Midwest today. The uh, town of Rockford, Illinois already reporting five inches of snow on the ground. The city of Chicago could pick up up to 20 inches before all of this is said and done. The uh, blizzard warnings and winter storm warnings are out over much of the Midwest from Oklahoma northeastward up into uh, the Chicago area and all of that will be in effect until around at least midnight tonight and maybe even extended after that. Let's take a look at our forecast map and see what's going on here. First of all, the heavy snow is possible all through this area, a huge area expecting heavy snow all the way from the Red River of Texas, the Texas-Oklahoma border, all the way up into southern Maine. And that covers the southern Great Lakes and most of the uh, eastern part of the Midwest. As we go a little farther to the south, we see that freezing rain is expected all the way from northwestern Arkansas up through southern Connecticut and into Rhode Island. All of this area here expecting some sleet or freezing rain, so driving will be very hazardous in this area here. The uh, city of St. Louis is expecting up to three quarters of an inch of ice. As we go farther south, severe thunderstorms are possible anywhere from the upper Texas coast all the way through uh, the state of Alabama and along the Gulf Coast. Now if these develop, this could cut off our uh, supply of moisture coming up from the Gulf, so our rainfall would not be uh, as significant as we are looking at right now. This could cut down on it. Rain is expected elsewhere from uh, southwest Georgia northward 
on up into northern Kentucky where it changes over to that freezing rain right along this uh, warm front which becomes a cold front over West Virginia. Going farther west, heavy snow is possible over the mountains of New Mexico and into Arizona and the snow extending from Utah all the way to the coast of Maine. So a huge area of snow today and a very large area of heavy snow expected. High pressure here is funneling the cold air down into the region and that is a big factor in producing this winter storm. Well let's take a look at our forecast and we'll see that we don't have anything like that in our area. We will see a cloudy sky today our high this afternoon will be around 50 degrees with a north wind at 5. Showers will be developing late tonight with a low of 48, south wind 10 to 15 miles per hour. Wednesday, showers during the morning, clearing during the afternoon. It will be rather windy on Wednesday with a southwest wind at 15 to 20 miles per hour, and we could see gusts up around 40. Four Wednesday night clear with a low of 33, northwest wind 10 to 20 miles per hour. Thursday will be sunny and cooler with a high of 45, north wind 5 to 10 miles per hour. Thursday night cloudy with a low of 30. Cloudy on Friday with rain developing during the afternoon and a high of 50. Friday night chance of rain with a low of 37. Saturday chance of rain, high of 46 and a low Saturday night of 33. Our high temperature yesterday 45 and our low this morning was 34. And that's a look at your Rocky Mount weather right up to the minute. Now back to you. All right, thanks Fred. And here with us now is our sports reporter Edward Green. What's going on in sports, Edward? Well, we didn't mention it, but I was looking at that forecast map right there. Mm -hmm. The Super Bowl is going to be in Dallas this weekend, and right. uh, <laughs> they're going to have some trouble. I, I have read some reports that there already a lot of snow on the ground. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, Texas Stadium has a, a roof over it, right. so we got the retractableness going on. But man, you know, they were talking about it being a great place for people to go out and party, but it's going to be mm -hmm. tough if the weather's like that all That's week. That's right. That's but right. We got some other stuff to get to too with <laughs> okay. football. Well, it was an all-star kind of weekend as this past Sunday saw two of the country's most popular sports display their most popular players. Now in Hawaii, the NFL displayed its wares for all to see and saw the NFC jump out to a huge 42 to nothing lead by the second quarter. And one of those scores came here early in the second as Matt Ryan found Atlanta teammate Tony Gonzalez in the back of the end zone to make it 21 nothing. And the NFC held on to win that slugfest 55 to 41. Now, as for the NHL, its All-Star Weekend took place right here in the Tar Heel State over in Raleigh at the RBC Center. And the Hurricanes' own Eric Stahl takes the pass on the breakaway, and he picks up a goal here to not the score at 7-all. But it was not enough as Team Lindstrom defeated Team Stahl 11-10. And it is interesting, Marie, that two sports uh, had their All-Star games just as our local basketball teams have either hit or just passed the halfway mark of conference play mm -hmm. with just about two weeks left in the regular season. So it seems like all the sports are kind of in sync right now with their with their midways, although the NFL Pro Bowl is at pretty much the end of the season. But a lot of midways now. we got the NBA All-Star game to look forward to in a few weeks. And uh, overall, it's just a really exciting time. And, of course, you know, with that 73 or 68 degree weather we could have tomorrow, oh, yeah. almost starting to feel like baseball season when we okay. get soon. So, <laughs> so much going on right now. All right. Well, thank you very much, Thanks, Edward. And thank you for tuning in to Newsbreak. Join us Thursday as we continue to bring you news that's impacting our community. For WHIG TV, I'm Marie Torres. We'll see you next time.